child of Kenya won the 115th Boston Marathon in two hours, three minutes, and two seconds. That was a record time. He broke a previous time record that was recorded by another Kenyan in 2010 by two minutes. He was awarded 225,000 US dollars in total bonuses. I, I was so impressed. I did a Google search and found that Kenyans have a very impressive record in the Boston Marathon, winning it from 1991 to 2010 years, back to back, and that's impressive. In my study of the Word of God, I. I discovered that the metaphor of race has become a Christian cultural language. And Paul here in our scripture grabs on to this metaphor to teach us what we need to do to be disciples of Jesus Christ. I want to suggest, therefore, that building a Christian community, living for the kingdom, is not a splint. It's a marathon. I'm told that those who do long-distance running have to undergo challenging and agonizing training. They have to endure hardship. They have to have certain restrictions on their social life. They have to live on a simple diet. They have to learn to have good sleeping time and they have to learn to rise up early in the morning. They, they have to keep their focus on the price at the end. Imagine if you can. The thrilling moment at the finish line when the crowds in the stands begin to roll a deep and long shout of approval uh, at that moment all eyes are focused on the winner shouting his name or her name calling out his or her country in different accents I want to suggest that we are in a race we are running a race of time and life. This is a long distance race. It's a Christian marathon. There will be hills to climb. There will be valleys to cross. There will be streams to work through we will have obstacles to overcome. We will have to endure the temptations to give up because uh, we are experiencing hardship. People will, may try to trip us. The heat may be overpowering. The wind may be too strong. This is a marathon, my friends. It's not a splint. I'm sorry that sometimes we preachers have left the impression that Christian life is easy. No. No. It is a strenuous effort. We 
we have to develop a sense of self-control. It's one, it's one where we have to exercise faith and obedience a christian life must be must be a life of love and patience it must be a life of devotion to god and benevolence to others everyone is a runner and the apostle calls upon us to run the race to maintain Christian discipline and exercise self-control. Paul is saying, run hard. Don't walk. Continue running. Don't stop. Continue running. Don't sit down. Continue running because Jesus is your pace setter. You can win the prize. So I will ask you again to look at verse 25 in our text for today. And everyone who competes for the price is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. I, I, I know, I know. I know that there is a greater temptation in this country to live for and work for money. There is a great temptation for us to live loose and live for ourselves, avoiding the challenging discipline needed in a Christian life. The Seventh-day Adventist lifestyle requires temperance. <clears throat> this lifestyle is now accepted by the secular health industry. CNN and other media outlets did, did a documentary on the Adventist lifestyle. The remnant lifestyle is now part of the mainstream. It encourages self-denial Denying ourselves of worldly pleasures, it encourages forgiveness for our enemies, it even teaches us to pray for them, it encourages temperance in all things. The remnant church lifestyle gives you an opportunity for a new start. It is a lifestyle that encourages us to eat good nutrition. And in most cases, that means a vegetarian diet. It calls for exercise. It tells us to drink enough clean water. It challenges us to have enough time in the sunlight, calling us to be temperate having enough rest and fresh air and it challenges us to trust God. Friends, we are called not only to sit in the church pews but to participate in the church's spiritual life. We are called not to stand on the sideline to cheer the elders and departmental men as they do the departmental work. No, we are actually called to be part of the working team of the church. I want to suggest, therefore, as a team, we need to learn to develop our our deep emotional and the spiritual muscles we we need to get into the race full with full force we need to get into the race at the top shape we need to have a strong heart we need to get our hands dirty working the work of grace doing evangelism growing the church and the kingdom of god 
Look at our text. Look at verse 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the price? Run in such a way that you obtain it. Now, now, in, 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 uh, in, in, in 2011, in the Boston Marathon, Moses, another Kenyan, stayed with Joseph Matai over the last five miles. He was running with him step by step, step by step, until the final 600 meters when Matai broke loose and won the race. Moses finished in the second place four seconds behind. We all know in any race, there can only be one winner. Fortunately, not so in the Christian marathon. Paul takes this obvious reality and says, says all in all races, all run, but one wins. They do so. And they win a perishable crown. Then he turns around to the Christian race and he challenges all of us and he says, All of you run. <laughs> he uses plural verbs. His challenge is not you singular. No, he says, You plural. Paul is saying, You all run in such a way that you all win. The price is offered to each and every one of us, my friends. We are not competing against each other. No, that would be very unfair. If we are going to compete against these Kenyans, it will be very unfair. Looking at the Boston statistics, the history shows that these Kenyans are tough runners. They, 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 they are fast runners. They, they are strong runners and maybe they are even smarter runners than most of us. Uh, 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 but the good news is that, the good news is that it's okay uh, because you and me are running towards God's opportunities. Uh, and when we do so, we can get to the finish line. They, there is no reason for us to stop. No, 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 no. There is no reason for us to sit down. No, there is no reason for us to be lazy. We are almost there. I can almost hear the cheering of those that have gone this way before us. You know one thing I learned about this Kenyan guy, Geoffrey Matai? When they interviewed him, he emphasized that first time in a race is a product of a teamwork. You run together. It's not an individual glory. If you can run together in a pact of three or four people and you are helping each other, you can make the, the rest go faster. He explained that if you are strong in a group, you can push, push the rest. Uh, uh, and so, my friends, my friends, I will tell you that this is true in a Christian marathon as well. We need each other. <laughs> there are people here who are just beginning to learn about Christ. There are people, people here who, who are naive about the power of Satan and the power of this present world. There are people who think that they can be Christians just by coming to, to light of Christ, just walking in just in time for the 11 o'clock sermon. My friends, let's support each other. Let's encourage the new believers. We are going for the kingdom. We, we need to learn to do more than talk the talk. 
No, no. We need to learn to walk the walk. You see, we need, we need to learn our role as followers of Jesus Christ is, is to keep in step with Jesus Christ because he is our pace setter. We must allow our lives to demonstrate the life of faith. We, we must share the good news. We must invite people into the fellowship and encourage them to stay connected to Christ. I need to close. But I'm told... I'm told that for marathon runners, they train to run 10 to 20 miles a day. I'm told that to prepare for long distance running, you have to endure hardship to gain the victory. Now, if you look at these if you look at these athletes every one of them runs but only one wins the prize I want to suggest that let's all run to win <laughs> we must be good christian athletes we must engage in certain Christian exercises to help us in this life. We must, we must really be serious about living Christian life. We, we must run for that eternal goal. We must prepare to live that life that's coming. I don't know about you, my friends, but I've made up my mind that by God's grace, I will run this Christian race. Amen. And I'm running to win, my friends. I'm running straight for that finish line. I, I, I will give it all I got. By God's grace, I will not allow a sloppy life for me. No, 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 no. I, I will not be caught napping. No. I, I am running and I will run all the time. I have promised myself I will stay late. I, I am not going to stop. I want to be in top conditions. I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to go lazy. I will keep going and you know my friends if you are a member here it means you are part of the pact let's run together Jesus is setting the pace for us and we can keep in stride with him the finish line is almost there we can keep going we must run we must be mindful of the, the victory ahead the prize is eternal life uh, let's, let's help each other. Let's watch out for each other. You see, let, let, let's try to experience good life here as we prepare for the good life yonder. You see, my friends, I am just your pastor. I will preach. I will teach. I will pray for you, but I'm mindful that I am also a runner. So I will keep my pace. Uh, I, I will keep my, fact, my, my eyes focused on the cross. I am mindful because I don't want to be a castaway when it's all done. Uh, please, just imagine, just imagine in your mind if you can, the thrilling moment when, when the trumpet sounds. And we hear those good words. Welcome home, my son or my daughter. I imagine the saved crowd from every nation, from every tribe, from every language, from every people group. As they begin to roar with 
deep, deep shouts of approval as the golden gates begin to open. And at that moment, every eye in the universe is fixed upon the lamp of God as he sets the pace for this pack of seven people as they begin to run into the hallelujah square. They will be waving palms of victory. And, and the universe will, will be calling out, the king has come. The Lord of Lords has come. And the saved saints will join in the song of Moses and the Lamb by and by as we take our last lap in the Hallelujah Square. Our loving God and the host of heaven will cheer us on as we get to the finish line. I don't want to be a cast out. So my friends, let's look out for each other. 